The mean effective pressure is another st uh, metric of a cycle. So let me do this because this can be confusing. The they ask you, calculate the mean effective pressure. What exactly is it and why would it be of any use? Well, when we had the actual cycle, we had atmospheric pressure. And then we went through where it was going from, uh, that the volume was at uh, bottom dead center to top dead center. And the, as you compressed, the pressure was going up, up, up. You had some combustion occurring near top dead center. Had a very high pressure. You undergo expansion all the way down. You had a quick blowdown. It, then you were going through an exhaust stroke. Then you were closing the exhaust valve, coming back for an intake stroke. And that completed the cycle. That's like a PV diagram of an actual uh, internal combustion engine spark ignition. And we said, well, let's model it uh, with a uh, auto cycle approximation. So think about this as still atmospheric pressure. And you still have the same uh, top dead center volume and bottom dead center volume. And we'll start at atmos nearly atmospheric pressure at top dead center. We'll go through a compression stroke. Then we'll replace the combustion by just constant pressure or constant volume heat addition. So the pressure goes up from state one to two, then to three. And then you expand the power stroke down to four and then heat rejection. Wasn't that our approximation to the more complex actual cycle? So this is our auto cycle. Well, let's even make it easier because what is this area right here inside the cycle on a PV diagram? Yeah, the network per cycle. If this is a specific volume, then it's a lowercase w net in kilojoules per kilogram, a specific network of the cycle. Well, it's approximately, if you forget about this area in here, it's approximately the same area. That's why we're trying to model it. It's approximately the same, okay? So it's not precisely the same at all. But let's do an extreme simplification an extreme simplification for this cycle. Well, think of your atmospheric pressure coming across. And if you just think of it, it's kind of like, well, this is my difference in the pressure for the whole cycle, right? We'll just make it where you go from uh, bottom dead center to top dead center. And you're just going to do it like this. Make it a square box, you know, or whatever, the rectangles, just on that PV diagram. And so what is this pressure right here? That's the mean effective pressure. What is this difference? This is, uh, per unit mass basis, the displacement volume, just like it was here. Displacement volume, just like it is there, too. I mean, it's all this, the difference in the volumes or the displacement volume. So you would think that, okay, well, here is my net work of the cycle per unit mass. We want that to be the same as for the auto cycle, and that allows us to define the mean effective pressure because isn't the work net of the cycle the mean effective pressure times the displacement volume? Sure. Sure. And so that's how you actually calculate the mean effective pressure. You would first calculate the net work of the cycle and divide it by the displacement volume. I'm not a big fan of the mean effective pressure, but it's just another metric. And this book likes to throw it out as, okay, you calculated that, now calculate this, calculate the mean effective pressure. Make sense? It's like extreme simplification.